Welcome to a video of me making a garment that I want to wear on a daily basis but can't because I live in the tropics and it would be highly impractical of me to do so. It's been quite a while since my last video upload due to a lot of factors. Suffice to say there have been a lot of changes around here. For one, my precious camera has gone out of order. Thankfully, I do have my trusty little camcorder whose zooming capabilities make up for the slightly lesser video quality. For example, I would have never known the existence of that mahogany fruit up there till I zoomed it all the way up using the camcorder. also have you know that this particular sewing project was actually finished way back on October of 2020. However, I have been directing my focus on other very important projects that take precedence over making videos. So it wasn't until recently when I actually started editing the footage that I had. No need to worry though as I will be sharing my super exciting projects with you all soon. I'll also be including a little bit of background on them at the end of this video to shed some light on how they'll affect my content in the coming months when hopefully I do have them. I'm also trying out this voiceover setup so I can take advantage of silent nights where I can record more things in contrast to during the day when I try to record and there are just too many noises going about like the birds and the chainsaws from the neighboring plot so I'll see how it works out. Let it be known though that I'm not the best at explaining things in a very systematic and organized way so I hope the video can make up for my confusing narration in helping you understand what I did without wanting to do your head in so consider yourself warned. Okay so if you've seen my previous video which is actually the only other video I have you would know that I have an affinity for repurposing flower sacks which is the material of choice for this garment. The pattern for this is pretty straightforward Basically, the entire thing is made up of 13 parts or panels. Each panel is one uncut and unmodified vertical half of a sack. So that equals to 6.5 sacks in total for the entire thing. I used 4 panels for the bodice, the 2 unprinted panels for the main exterior fabric, and the corresponding printed panels used as lining. The sleeves are unlined, so that's a panel for each. The skirt is 6 of alternated printed and unprinted panels. The remaining half of a sack was used for the center plackets under arm gussets and the sleeve cuffs. This pattern results in a very boxy, oversized, and drop shoulder style dress, which was my goal. If a more figure-hugging silhouette is desired, a lot of adjustments will be necessary. Before I started, I had to cut the sacks in half vertically to separate the printed side from the unprinted ones and made sure to iron them all flat. After marking the center, two unprinted panels are sewn together on the longer sides to make up the front and back of the bodice then the newly formed seam is ironed down flat. The marked center of the seam is where the neckline goes, so after marking down that neckline, I embroidered a sphere of leaves to frame it. I made sure to leave it unfinished and open-ended near the center of the front panel because that will be where the placket is. The embroidery here is fairly simple, just using very basic lazy daisy and stem stitches in a myriad of greens. 
Then I did a basting stitch along both sides of the seam from the side of the marked neckline to the edge to make sure that the seams get included in the next step, which is sewing eyelets. Now, my aim for this part was to make a mock-up lace shoulder, basically a decorative lace-up shoulder, hence the eyelets. This design choice is a personal twist and one can still go without it and still end up with a beautiful dress. Once the seams are properly basted down, I went on to pierce holes every one half inch using an awl and made some eyelets. This is where the decorative lace-up shoulder comes to life. I basically embroidered the lace-up cords, so I made sure to sew in between the panels and go out through the eyelets to have the desired lace-up effect and so the underside remains neat. It turned out just how I wanted it and it really does look like a lattice shoulder, unless investigated more closely. After that's done, I started with the lining and sewed together two printed panels and then ironed the seam flat. This will then be laid on top of the embroidered panels with seams aligned but with the wrong sides out like so. Pad stitching will then be done to the aligned seams along the marked neckline and along the center front of the panel. I marked a 3 inch gap along the front on the bodice because this will be where the embroidered packet will be placed. Said placket is made separately then attached. Once everything is securely aligned and pad stitched, I sewed the panels together along the marked front opening and around the neckline. Once that's done, remove the pad stitching, cut away the keyhole formed by the stitches and flip the lining over. This way, the back of the embroidery is hidden and you're left with an open neckline and center front and most importantly a neat finish. I then ironed the flipped panels down together and aligned the seams again so I can sew along both sides of the eyelets on the shoulder line. I then did some blanket stitching using a rust colored embroidery thread along the sides of the mock eyelets to cover stitches on both sides that were done to secure both panels and to also add an additional design flare. At this point, I decided to mix things up and set aside the bodice to start making the sleeves. After marking the panel's vertical center, I sewed 3 8 inch pin tucks halfway down on the center 3 4th of the panel, so that leaves about 3 inches on each side with no tucks. I then steam ironed down the pin tucks. The direction of the ironed down tucks must always be laid towards the back, so I kept that in mind for each sleeve. Seam ironing serves as a sort of permanent or semi-permanent pleating, so always be precise when doing it. I made sure to keep things even, neat, and completely flattened. Once that's done, the ends of the pin tucks are hand sewed down to keep them in place. So how I did it is after I locked down each tuck, I pushed the needle under the tuck between the folds to move to the next tuck to be locked to work with one continuous thread but without the thread tracks being visible in between.
now that I had them all locked in place, I proceeded to sew the underarm gussets to the sleeve panels, then ironed them down and hand out the seams. that is then attached to the bodice, ironed down, and seams hand felt as well. Blanket stitching is done along the armhole seams. Then, the sides of the bodice up to the end of the sleeve is sewn together in one go to fully form the sleeve and close the bodice. I didn't have footage of me making the sleeve cuffs but basically they're just a common one and a half sleeve cuff with a lazy daisy chain of leaves and outlined with a rust color blanket stitch to tie everything together with the bodice. Now we move on to the center plackets. Each placket is one and a half inches wide, so that makes three inches for both where they form the opening on the center front of the bodice. I decided to do some freehand embroidery on them, so the end design isn't really symmetrical, but it still works because of the color scheme. And I made sure to make the botanical designs as fluid as much as I can, if you get what I mean. So the embroidery is also just a mix of easy and basic stitches. Lazy daisies, French knots, back stitches, and stem stitches to name a few. After this is done, I attached the finished blankets to the center opening, then blanket stitched down the seams to go with the ongoing theme. The skirt is actually the easiest part since it's just six panels sewn together. The printed and plain panels are alternated and once they're sewn together, everything is ironed down and the seams are whip stitched. They are then rouged together and attached to the bodice and I made sure to have the unprinted panel placed on the center front. I secure the seam of the bodice and skirt using some leftover bias tape I've had for ages. After all of that, the dress was pretty much almost finished. I only had to hem it and it was all ready to be worn. However, when I stepped back to assess the whole thing, I found that I wanted to add on more details. This is where the idea of leaf patches on the unprinted panels entered my mind. To give life to the skirt and tie it in with the intricate botanical details of the bodice. Now, this would have been done best before the panels were sewn together to form the skirts so the embroidery is easier to accomplish. However, I had no other choice because the idea arrived late for me so I had to make do with the added hassle of managing a lot of fabric while embroidering. To make the leaf patches, I watered down some acrylic paint 
and used sponges to apply to some scraps from the leftover flour sacks, essentially painting or dyeing said fabric. The reason why I watered down my acrylic before using it on any fabric is so that I remove any possibility of the paint cracking since it is absorbed rather than just sitting on top of the fabric. I used earthy colors and just tried to draw inspiration from how different leaves look during different seasons. I even ended up with a leaf blight looking pattern which, however unfavorable through a gardening perspective, can still be visually interesting <laughs> and also pretty realistic in a sense. So I decided to go with the most basic leaf shape and cut them up into the desired sizes to form a creeping stalk from the hem upwards, which would be bigger leaves that gradually decrease in size going up. I laid them down on the skirt to determine their proper place, then pad stitched them to keep them in place so I can attach them permanently by blanket stitching around them. After that's done, the pad stitching is removed and the leaves are connected with stem stitches. I did this on all unprinted panels of the skirt, so that's one big stem on the center front and two smaller stems on each of the unprinted back panels. Finally, I finished the entire thing with a 2 inch hem for the skirt. If you remember, I mentioned earlier that this was a project of October 2020. During that time, I was picking some weeds and wildflowers from around the house to put in vases and one of the arrangements was left out too long and dried out. I mentioned this because that dried flower bunch along with my first ever embroidery and bag project from a year ago plays a part in me showing you the finished dress. I present myself frolicking around under coconut trees and trying so hard to embody the aesthetic. Enjoy! When I started this video, I stated that I would be giving more context to any current and ongoing projects I have that has caused me to pause on posting videos for a while. These projects can be divided into two categories, sewing or artistic projects and non-sewing projects. Of particular importance is a big sewing project in the form of my graduation runway collection. I'm currently a fashion design student. Despite the pandemic causing drastic changes to our academic schedule, my school is still hopeful to have our graduation sometime at the end of this year, but only should the circumstances allow it since everything just seems so uncertain at this point. But graduation meant that each student would make their own mini collection based on an assigned theme, and so that is now currently on the works. I can't really show the collection and the creative process of the entire thing until after graduation when they've had premiered in a way, but rest assured I will be sharing said process when it's said and done. The other big project, the non-sewing one, is actually a gardening project which, although particularly is not on a larger scale by any means, is still a pretty big deal for me since self-discovery is always cool. And this brings me to the decision of posting more than just sewing content like I originally planned since I've realized that I really want to incorporate different interests and activities that I have. 
I'd also really highly appreciate any opinions or suggestions you guys may have about the plans I mentioned regarding my future content in the next couple of months. I think it's really important to know what you guys think because that way I'd be able to make my future videos more interesting and more informative. So if you have any thoughts, you can comment them down below. I'll be sure to read each and every one of it. Any feedback is welcome here. Okay, so I think I've babbled on long enough. Thank you so much for your support by viewing this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in my next one, which I'm sure will be involving plants and animals. Till then, bye! Stop it!